I have to admit, I nearly lost it when I read this headline. Tucker Carlson is nothing without Fox News, and his sad Twitter broadcast debut proves it. Seriously, dudes, the panic is palpable. Chris Licht, the head of CNN, is out. The, the staff at CNN are revolting. Okay, well, I, normally I, I try not to use that word because it means both disgusting and in revolution. But in this instance, perhaps both. They're outraged that Chris Licht hosted Donald Trump for a town hall. And despite the ratings bump, they want him gone. So he left. Cable news, the corporate press is collapsing right before our very eyes. Onward to victory, my friends. Tucker Carlson's sad little Twitter broadcast. Yeah, it only got like 70 million views. 70 million. I, man, I feel so defeated. You know, it's like here I am working really hard to produce these segments for all you guys. And I do, you know, 20 minute segments, 10 minute segments, two hour show. And we get 100, 200, 300,000. And Tim Cast I probably sometimes we get it. We get uh, um, between uh, the the uh, YouTube live and the podcast, maybe like half a million, half a million. It's very good. It's very it's very good to get half a million when Tucker Carlson is getting 70 million. <laughs> OK, all right. To be fair, this was Tucker Carlson's first Twitter show launch. So, of course, everybody wanted to watch it and see what it was all about. And it was it was fantastic. It was your typical Tucker Carlson monologue segment. It was about 10 minutes long. That's what Tucker produces on his main show. And then you'd throw in interviews and discussions and commercials. And 10 minutes is a good start. I think when it comes to the next few episodes he does, it's probably going to be, I don't know, six, seven million per per episode. They're going to go viral. Everyone's going to share them. They're going to debate the ideas because that's what Tucker does and has always done. And of course, Media Matters and other leftist organizations are going to be obsessed with it. But here's what really matters. The media is losing their minds because they're done. They're falling apart. Tucker Carlson. Oh, I, I can't read. 65 Point seven million views. You call that sad? Wow. These are bigger than Super Bowl numbers. If this is the future of media, if Tucker really is able to maintain anything close to this viewership, he could charge millions of dollars for an ad. Millions. Because it's premium. Now, with the internet, CPMs and all that stuff, I'd estimate that Tucker probably would end up charging around 100 to maybe $500,000 per ad on his Twitter show. Probably would jump in around the three minute mark and be like, this segment of Tucker Carlson tonight is brought to you by insert, you know, company. But I think Tucker would probably be better off advertising his own brand, his own products or his own website. But to call it sad is absolutely laughable. Here's the big news. And then we'll jump back to the uh, Tucker Carlson thing. I know that most of you probably would prefer just to uh, have me rag on these people and insult them and, and cheer for, for Tucker. But there is very serious news first, which does allow me to rag on the corporate press. So let's start here and talk about the fall of the once great narrative machine. CNBC reports Chris Licht out after Trump town hall fallout brutal Atlantic article. They say Chris Licht is out at CNN after leading the news network for a little more than a year. Parent company Warner Bros. Discovery announced Wednesday morning. The company said it's, it is seeking a replacement. In the meantime, executives Amy and Tellis, Virginia Mosley, Eric Sherling and David Levy will lead CNN. The company said, oh, it is all crumbling down around you. Licht's departure came as he faced a rebellion among CNN's talent and staff. His tenure, which effectively started when he eliminated the network's expensive CNN Plus streaming service, was riddled with programming missteps and rock bottom ratings. But CNN already had rock bottom ratings. In fact, when they hosted the Trump town hall, the ratings improved. Poor Chris Licht, bro. Um, I don't know what uh, what's going on with you if you're still under contract, but I would love to sit down and talk with you about this because it really did seem like Chris Licht was like, hey, look, man, CNN has gone left. We should not do that. We should have legitimate news. And I agree. And I feel kind of bad because he was trying to bring that back, even getting rid of Don Lemon. But it is what it is. 
He drew even more heated criticism in recent weeks after the network hosted a town hall with Donald Trump that was packed with scores of the former president's cheering fans. While the event drew 3.3 million viewers, CNN's ratings plummeted afterwards. Two days after the town hall, CNN's prime viewership came in below right wing outlet Newsmax, a much smaller network. That is not his fault. But I got to tell you, I know how all this happens. First, I will say, if you as a news network cannot host the Republican frontrunner for the presidency, you're not a news network. You're done. It's over. They're screaming like, we don't want this guy on our network. Then be a specialty activist brand. But the most trusted name in news, you're going to have to have the Republican frontrunner. How insane have has it all become? Where CNN is like, well, we can't host Republicans anymore. Great. You're a liberal activist network. Congratulations. Your market share is going to. And so this is what happened. Jeff Zucker comes into CNN. I think this was like what? Early 2010s or like 2012 or something. He comes in and says, my intention is to rip the heart of this network clean from its withering corpse and crush it between my fingers. And that's what he did. A little energy for you. That's what he did. Jeff Zucker turned CNN into a leftist anti-Trump activist network and viewers like me abandoned ship. I tell you the story all the time. When I lived in New Jersey, I had a big projector and it would be on 24 seven playing CNN. OK, not literally 24 seven. But when I woke up, here's what I would do. This is before Tim cast IRL for the most part. I'd wake up at about 6 a.m. I usually I wake up a little bit uh, later these days. I'd wake up at 6 a.m. I'd get on the treadmill. I would turn on CNN. So the news is playing in the background while I played Hearthstone, the card game. You guys know it, maybe. And uh, I would exercise in the morning, watch CNN. And they'd be like, here's what's happening in the news. And this is like, what year is this? Probably like 26, 2017, 2018. And then one day something happened. I'm watching CNN and they're talking about Donald Trump. And I'm like, OK, you know, whatever. This is the news, I guess. And then I see on Twitter there was mass protest, mass unrest in Iran. And I'm like, well, how do I find out about it? I turn on Fox News. Bang. They're talking about protests in Iran. I'm like, OK, I'll leave this on, I guess. I didn't watch Fox News. And then after that, uh, there was another uh, uh, another instance happened because I'm like, OK, you know, I'm watching CNN. And they're talking about Donald Trump, a panel, a ta- Donald Trump, Donald Trump. And there is like a hurricane coming to the southeast or something like that. And I'm like, OK, how do I find out about this? So I turn on Fox News. What are they doing? Meteorological reports, weather, disaster, conflict. And I'm like, OK, I guess I'll leave this on. And that was it. At that point, I posted on, you can see it on Instagram when I posted it, the CNN challenge. I called it turn on CNN and then turn on Fox News and see if CNN is just talking about Trump. Like the point was the challenge is, can you get real news from CNN? You would turn it on and it would be Trump and you turn on literally anything else. And it was like news thing happening. And so that was it. From that point on, I just stopped watching CNN. And that's what Zucker did. He ripped out the heart because he was like, it's cheap content. It boosts our viewership. But what he did not understand. When you have a million viewers and they were getting like a million plus, And you say, hey, when we do this Trump roundtable, we get 1.5 million. What he doesn't understand is that you are not supplementing your viewership. You are swapping out your viewership. That million, those were like moderates who cared about news. When you shifted to Trump, 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 that number drops to half a million and you add one million left liberal anti-Trump activists. Now your network is going to keep pushing in this direction because of the views. What happens? What's remaining of those moderates disappear. I being one of them. I no longer watch CNN and don't care to because it's pointless. They're insane people and they've never recovered. So when Chris Licht comes in and says, let's bring it back, let's try and be news again. All that happens now is you lose all of those psychopathic liberal activists and cult members, and you're never getting me back. I'm not going to watch your network, dude. You can't save it. Guess what? CNN may as well be Media Matters at this point. It may as well be a nonprofit leftist Democrat advocacy media outlet that will reach a couple hundred thousand people. Good luck. That's what you've become. 
They say it was the unflattering 15,000 word profile of Licht in the Atlantic titled Inside the Meltdown at CNN that might have sealed his fate. He apologized to staffers Monday morning, but top brass at CNN's parent company, Warner Brothers Discovery, including CEO David Zaslev, weren't happy with the article and, its, and the aftermath. I have great respect for Chris personally and professionals, as Love said in a news release. The job of leading CNN was never going to be easy, especially at a time of huge disruption and transformation. And he has poured his heart and soul into it. While we know we have, to, we have work to do as we look to identify a new leader, we have absolute confidence in the team that we have in place and will continue to fight for CNN and its world class journalism. I'm going to be honest with all you guys. I 100% believe that if I was placed in charge of CNN, the network would turn around in a matter of months and it would become the most profitable cable network channel on TV. The website, all of it, guaranteed. I know, boisterous, immodest, arrogant, you might say, but I'm going to be honest with all of you. I think if I were to randomly choose any one of you watching this video and put you in place of that network, the network would recover. Now, to be fair, I'm not like I run a media company, so I think I absolutely could fix CNN. Totally, totally think so. But I think the average person could fix it. <laughs> like That's my point. You go in there and be like, fire these people, cover real news. You're good. The problem is they won't. You need to clean house. Your ratings may falter. But if you come out right now, if CNN came out and said, we're getting rid of the leftist activism, your ratings would spike. Everyone would say, I want to watch this. What's this all about? Instead, they just falter. Instead, they can't break the addiction. Look at this. They just can't break the addiction. Now, Glenn Greenwald has a very excellent breakdown. He says media figures are flagrantly rewriting the history of CNN right before your eyes to make it seem as if CNN only started failing when Chris Licht was hired and demanded it stop being a DNC activist group. CNN was already in free fall and collapse when Licht was hired. That's true. One of the few tools liberal elites have left is to keep corporate media outlets in captivity to establishment Democrat ide ideology by using Twitter to shame any corporate media employees who deviate. That's why Licht has to be destroyed. Fine, but don't lie about pre licked CNN. Here's from uh, Daily Beast says, CNN bottomed out in 2021. Will viewers come back? I guarantee I could bring those viewer ba viewers back. I could launch shows. I could fix the network. But CNN wants to collapse. So be it. Let me just explain something to all of you outside of our beliefs, our views and the age group that we reach here at Timcast. I understand cable net cable TV is a different audience, but let me break it down for you. Timcast IRL is consistently the most viewed live show on YouTube at 8 p.m. I believe like nine out of 10 nights or, you know, let's say I said four, four out of five, let's say typically every day. Timcast IRL will be the number one live show at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. on YouTube. Sometimes there are other shows that are bigger because it's not absolute, but we're a consistent nightly talk show and culture show. We dominate. We end up hitting around, I think like 400 to 500,000 in the key demo, which is 25 to 54. Uh, and then we have a, a decent amount of viewers who are actually 18 to 24, surprisingly. I think it's like 16, 17%. Then take a look at cable. Cable is over 60. Guess what? People over 60, moderate to conservative by today's standards. CNN, you're trying what they're trying to do is they're like, we better attract young people. Otherwise, we're going to disappear. OK, well, going far left ain't going to do that for you because these people don't follow the news. Don't you get it? The people who believe the crackpot lies you push don't watch your network. They get their news from Facebook or TikTok or something. They hear it from activist organizations laundering far left ideology. The people who actually care about news like you or I, we would probably watch it if they were real. So imagine Chris Lick's vision come to fruition. I think it would have succeeded in the long run if he was allowed to do it. Attracting newer, younger viewers with conversations like this, raw, uncut, authentic, real news, and the viewership would skyrocket. But it's funny, Newsmax is doing better than CNN. Because we're sick of the lies. We're sick of the lies. Look at this. June 1st, CNN ratings crater to a whopping 25% since last year, despite bump from town hall. It is free fall. Benny Johnson says, Taylor, 
complaining, we'll, we'll keep it family friendly, about the lack of petty corporate media graphics on Tucker's new show reveals that our media experts don't understand what time it is. Audiences don't want superficial fluff and glitter. They want truth and substance. The media landscape has changed forever. My friends, I have no teleprompter. I have never used one except for when we were doing those early news segments on, on uh, um, what was, what did we call the channel before? It was, I think it, it was before it was Subverse. It was whatever. But on that channel was like a straightforward news program. It was like today in the news, X, Y, and Z happened. And we saw this happen and that happen. But for me and my Timcast channels, Timcast IRL, no prompters, none. I can do this whole thing with my eyes closed. There's quite literally nothing that I'm reading other than the tweets right here. No prompters. It is just me opining. It's what I think. It's what I feel. But they don't get it. They expect Tucker to come out with lower thirds. And Tucker is using a prompter. He is. And that's fine. It's a well-produced news segment formulating a strong argument. I got no problem with that. But people want authenticity. Tucker is giving them a straight shot in the news. It's, it's scripted for sure. But you can be scripted and authentic as long as you are, you're treating people's you're treating people with respect. You are being honest with them. Look at this from Insider. This is what they say. Tucker is in trouble if his first live stream is anything to go by. The first episode of Twitter stream debut uh, lacked the shine of his Fox News glory days. Without the Chiron and quick cuts, Carlson must now complete, compete with the likes of Alex Jones, and he's losing. It's the craziest thing I've ever read. I can just pull it up right here and show you 65 million views. That's losing. He did one video. We get that in the entire month. Tucker Carlson in one day, in 10 minutes, got what Timcast gets for the month. Ugh. <laughs> if Tucker, if, if Tucker, if this was like Anderson Cooper, I'd be a little upset. I'd be like, yikes, man, we got an uphill battle. But I'm actually pretty excited because, of course, Tucker Carlson gets more views than we do. He's Tucker Carlson. So when he can put out a video like this and just hit a grand slam and he doesn't need Chirons or anything fancy. Are you kidding me? He's he's you're you know what? Y'all deserve not to exist, because if you can't grasp what people are doing on the Internet with success. But I got to tell you something I've experienced quite a bit. We here at TimCast um, rarely make the news. Rarely. And I often wonder about it. Like, you know, they, uh, uh, they'll, they'll talk about various podcasts in the media, right-wing personalities, conservative personalities, uh, activists. My name never comes up because they have no idea what's going on in the real world. Now, I'm not here to say that, like, they should be knowing who I am. Like, oh, how dare they not know my name? Do you know who I am? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they're they're on the back end. They're on the they're on the back end of the bell curve. They are they are past their prime. They are out of the loop and they have no idea what's going on. They think Tucker Carlson did badly because he doesn't have shiny chirons. I don't. You know what this like? I mean, I guess technically, if you look down at the little thing right there that says become a member at TimCast.com, we have an overlay graphic that just sits there and doesn't change. I don't think we actually have this on, on TimCast News. We have that thing that says pop that pops up and says like share this video or whatever. That's about the gist of what we have. Other than that, I read the news. I pull up this, this video box thing we made with OBS, Open Broadcasting System, I think it's called. And then I just kind of rant. And you know what? It's more authentic and real than what these people produce for their canned fake news media narratives. But think about the game they're playing and why they feel this way. They carefully craft a narrative. I don't. We don't. No, media doesn't. Tucker Carlson breaks these narratives. That's why people like him. Shows like mine, why is it successful? Because I just kind of turn the camera on and talk openly about what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, and then I read some of the news and opine on it. Nothing's pre-scripted. Nothing's pre-planned. It is just a stream of my consciousness explaining what we think is going on, how I feel about it, what may or may not be. Reading comments, watching videos. And what does the media do? The exact opposite. They sit there, they look at the story and they say, how can we frame this? What's the, what's the, what's the angle? That's what they ask. They often ask, what's the angle? You know, for me, the only thing I, th I really think about is after I record, I'm like, what's the title of this video? You know, and uh, I try to go for like, 
medium to strong uh, uh, ev evocative language. Medium to strong. I don't like to do the overt, but depending how I'm feeling, I might. But medium. I don't want to do something weak where it's like Tim Pool addresses CNN failure. Like that's nothing. Says, you know, so this will probably be titled like CNN collapsing. Boss is out as Tucker, you know, bla hits grand slam. And I think that's just like colorful language to explain what is literally happening. But I got to tell you, I just want I want to say this. Congratulations, Tucker Carlson. Um, I'm not going to shed a single tear for CNN. You deserve it. I'm just happy to see it. Look, with the Bud Light effect, with Target, with Kohl's, with all these companies struggling and failing, we are marching toward victory, my friends, cultural victory. We have parents out there protesting what these schools are doing to their kids. We have a new wave of media dominating the airwaves and Tucker paving the way. The old guard is failing and they're too stupid to realize why. And we're winning. Feels good. Fourth of July is coming up in like a month. Really excited. Independence Day, I should say, the Fourth of July. And uh, we've got a documentary coming out. We have a documentary coming out next week. We're winning. It's fantastic. It feels great. Thank you all who are members at TimCast.com for being a part of that victory. For if you cannot do anything else, one thing you can do, if you are trapped in a job in a city and you are fighting to escape the oppressive woke cult that surrounds you and your family. You're having a very hard time with it. I know it may be the hardest thing you've ever done, and maybe you can't leave the city for a variety of reasons. There is one thing you can do. You can share shows like this. You can join Steven Crowder's Mug Club. You can become a member at TimCast.com. You can sign up for the Daily Wire Plus. That's the simplest thing you can do. Now, I would I would say, hey, become a member at TimCast.com, support our work directly. But I will I would be remiss if I did not mention the good work that Crowder does, the good work the Daily Wire does, the good work that Dave Rubin does, that so many other people on Rumble and Locals are doing. All of that and your willingness to pick and choose who you think should succeed with your contributions as members to all of their platforms. That is why we are winning. The budget for TimCast is primarily based upon you as members. The ability for us to do all these things. Let me add a few points. I did not bring this up before. I, I don't know if I should or shouldn't mention it. But um, yesterday, people on TimCast IRL said, I, I probably should point out when I, when, I, when I donate money. What I don't want to do is be like, hey, everybody, look how great I am. I gave money to somebody. However, maybe I should be the one standing in front of the crowd being like, charge, right? There is a father who is fighting for custody of his son, and they are trying to uh, uh, transition his kid. I donated to this man's give, send, go $10,000. Daniel Penny, of course, you know about. I was wrong in my view of, you know, what, how sh we should be helping this guy. And so I said, you know what? I feel it, it feels crummy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do the best I can. Twenty grand, $20,000. And then with, uh, th there's another, uh, uh, activist uh, small group that I'm going to leave them to their own devices. But I will mention I contributed uh, uh, around $10,000 to them to fight for uh, parents' rights and to prevent children from being uh, sterilized and things like that. Maybe I should highlight these things more so that you know when you become a member of TimCast.com. Actually, I'll put it this way. For the most part, the memberships at TimCast are going towards investment in everything we're doing. The uh, the coffee shop, the coffee company that we've made, uh, we've made Cast Brew Coffee to build a parallel economy and to build cultural spaces to fund music. We've got a uh, I don't want to say too much, but we're going to be working with a very big band and producing some really great music. Many you could probably guess. And uh, the, the, the profit basically that we get here. It goes towards just expanding more. We're hiring. Uh, uh, we're, we're having a meeting to hire another person. Um, today, shortly, to expand our culture war show. That's what the money goes to. And then when the profit rolls over to me, I personally make choices where I donate that to people who I think needs it, who need it. I don't take a salary. The salary that I get paid does not come out of TimCast IRL. To, uh, I'll, I'll frame this as carefully as possible, to be honest. Um, we make a lot of money through memberships, through advertising revenue and all that. 
The so what I pay myself is less than what this single channel generates. That's where my pay comes from. So I produce five videos per day and two on Friday for this channel. And from the ad revenue alone, I pay myself a salary. Timcast IRL generates ad revenue and memberships, and that money primarily goes towards investing uh, into the company, into funding projects. Albeit afterwards, there's profit rollover. I don't want to make it seem like that's not the case. But then I'll use any like I use that stuff for like contributing. And that's why we want to do this grant program. I know it's, it's really hard to get started because I'm just one guy and I rant on the Internet all day. But this is what I'm talking about. We are winning the culture war. I, I, I care more about, as I often say, I would rather spend 10 grand on seeing a father save his son than buying, a, I don't know, a gold watch or something. I don't care about that. I care about a gold watch. I did buy a new cool watch made of wood. <laughs> this is very cool. But like, for the most part, the, what matters to me to buy, if I could buy something, it's winning a cultural victory. It is making the world a better place. It is investing in meritocracy, individuality. And you know what? I spend substantially more on winning in these areas than so many other wealthy people who claim to care about the culture war. And it's not a humble brag. It is, I am lamenting the fact. I wish more people cared about that. The future for our children. I know, and I, I'll get this comment, Tim, you don't have kids. Yo, I care about your kids. I care about the future of this country. I care about our values and our ideals. I care about making it to the stars. I care about instilling in young people the value of hard work and justice, truth, meritocracy, personal liberties. That's what I want to see. If someone came to me and said, Tim, if you spend all your money and you stop doing this show, you've won the culture war. Like if they said, we can guarantee the culture war is over. Your ideals and the ideals of all of your fans and the people of America win. And it will cost you the price of everything you have. I would say deal. And then I'd go live in my van down by the river. I'd go skating. I'd go fishing. I would relax. It would be amazing. But here's the reality. The amount that we make here at Timcast, it's never going to be enough to win a culture war because the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. You can never stop because the forces of evil are constantly pushing upon us. So, what can I say? From the bottom of my heart, thanks to all of you who are members who watch these shows, watch my videos, I get to live a blessed life. Many of the people who work on Timcast projects also get to live a blessed life. There are not, it is not without its challenges, like being swatted 15 times, getting death threats. I have a bodyguard security when we travel. I have to have a security. We pay out for all that. That's the reality of it. So it doesn't come without its sort of Damocles, as it were. But it is an honor and a privilege to be able to stand up for what I believe in, to speak my mind every day into this camera for people to hear, and for in turn, you all to support the work that I do and all of us here at Timcast so that we can win a culture war, which will make the future better for everyone, including you and your children and generations to come. It is an honor and a privilege, my friends, seeing the collapse of CNN, the success of, of Tucker Carlson warms my heart and inspires me to, to the utmost degree. And so I hope on this day you sit back, crap op uh, crap op crack open an ice cold one, smile and nod as you enjoy a nice all American beef burger. And uh, just know that with everything we've seen over the past week, with the Bud Light effect, with Target, Victory has never been closer. CNN's demise, Tucker Carlson's success. Yo, I'm ready for fireworks today, but we still got to wait a month. I hope you're ready for what's to come because we're winning despite all of the bad things. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.